Hello everyone, Jake Fox City 4 here, and welcome back to another Foxhole Dev Blog Dissect. I'm um, sorry I haven't been putting out any videos or anything like the past. I think it's been two or three weeks. It's just um, I'm getting ready for like the Albion launch, and then I got the Foxhole launch, which we will uh, cover today. And you know, spoiler alert. And you know, AC still up, but luckily the uh, AC repairman came out um, when he's supposed to on the 11th, and he told us that it was completely broken. So. We're getting a new AC unit, which is going to be awesome. And that, as soon as the insurance company finalizes it, we uh, they can go ahead and start working us on getting us a new one. So that's going to be awesome. And probably we'll see me start pumping out a little bit more videos as my room will be far more bearable. All right. So without kind of further um, ado, let's get right back into uh, Dev Blog 26. Um, and the first, there's really three things that we covered. It's a very short Dev Blog today, so I'm going to cover some more um, content. Now I would normally do for a dev blog dissect, and then um, get my opinions on some matters and stuff. So, the biggest news is that Foxhole will be launching into early access on July 27th. Now, we found out this out like I want to say last Tuesday, so on the 11th. So we've known about this for some time now, and um, you know it came to no shock. We all knew this was coming eventually. We actually knew like three days before we were supposed to find out uh, somebody kind of leaked it I'm not going to say who but we kind of knew what's happening anyways so it will be the game will be $20 on uh, normally but there will be a discount I believe of 10% so a total of hold on that's bugging me no is that not going to do it hold on sorry folks that's just really bugging me alright there we go there will be a 10% discount so it's going to be about $18 now I do not know personally if it's going to be if this is twenty dollars Canadian or if it's twenty dollars USD. Um, I would say it's safe to assume it's going to be USD, even though it is a Canadian developer. Um, but yeah, so it's either going to be Canadian or USD, either or. Um, you know, you can do the conversion for either. Um, so kind of without this, uh, I, I guess I, I have to give a disclaimer this time. Uh, any future or piece of content shown here is a work in progress and subject to change in the future. Uh, I only did that because it said it. So, the first big announcement we got for this uh, early access will be the Storm Rifle. And I'm just going to leave Discord up because that is bugging me. There, there we go. There we go. Hold on. Guys. Sorry about this, folks. There we go. So, the uh, first big news is the Storm Rifle. So, uh, just off the bat, it, it looks like to me. It almost looks like a Sturmkedve, uh, 44, um, at least like this part. The, the, the lower receiver kind of reminds me of it. And then the butt stock a little, but other than that, you know, I'm no right, uh, expert in World War II um, weapons, but I'm also kind of getting a little bit of an M3 grease gun vibe. That's just my, my personal opinion, like a, uh, like a Sturmkedve with like an M3 with like a few other, like, uh, tossed in, uh, thrown in parts. So what this is going to kind of be, I'm just kind of going to read what uh, Mark Foot said here. Um, a new weapon is coming for early access. Hold on, wait here. Get out. Hold, ooh, there, come on, there go. <coughs> Sorry, folks, I'm just a little sick. Um, a new weapon is coming for early access. It will be the closest thing to Fox in Foxhole to an assault rifle, and will offer two modes of fire. Uh, three, if you want to count the grenade launcher. Um, it can be toggled between semi-auto and fully automatic modes, making it effective at both short and long range. Um, expect some uh, trade-offs though, the Storm Rifle will be heavy, cost additional resources to produce, and will have a re high recoil in automatic mode. See the images uh, below for more details. So basically, um, my first kind of response reaction to this is, this is probably going to be, it's going to probably be heavier than a carbine. But definitely lighter than an HMG. I'm saying it should be maybe like 1.5 of a carbine, maybe, or 1.25 of a, carb a carbine. Um, now, I'm not sure if they're going to introduce a new um, ammo type for this. Um, as much as I'd like to say, logically, like a. Uh, I'd like to see it use the 7.62. Um, historically, this could have probably have used a 40, uh, 45 ACP. Um, as I don't think 5.56 wasn't around then. I don't, again, no expert on, you know, ammo types or rifles for that matter, so, um, you know, I'm kind of talking down to my ass a little bit here, but, so basically this will be a hybrid of a, uh, machine gun and a carbine, 
Well, really, a, a submachine gun in our car, uh, a HMG gun, is basically what this is going to be. And I guess we can confirm it's going to get the rifle grenade launcher. I, I guess we can. We I think it's safe to say that that will happen. Um, it will be heavy, so probably 1.25 to 1.5 that of a carbine. Um, costs additional resources to produce, so I'm going to probably say it's going to cost us maybe 125, 150 basic materials. And we'll have a high recoil and automatic mode, so I'd expect something maybe about what the HMG is, and then I'd maybe take about a third of that, and that's what you're going to have, or probably closer to like half. So this can help give everyone an idea here. So we're kind of going to read what the uh, description for the uh, storm rifle is. I mean, see, storm conveyor, storm rifle. I mean, you can see that you can see the influence from the storm conveyor. And I do apologize on my uh, pronunciation of storm conveyor. I am not a German, and I am white. well, I am white, so I don't have an excuse. Anyways, uh, a storm rifle, a selective fire rifle that supports both semi-automatic and full automatic modes, giving it the close quarter effectiveness of a submachine gun and the range of a carbine. However, the flexibility comes at a cost at the storm rifle, as the storm rifle is expensive, heavy, and suffers from high recoil. Developed at the height of the Great Wars, the storm rifle was considered by many the most advanced rifle of the era. While the versatility of the weapon allowed soldiers to adapt to the change in battlefield conditions, it was deemed too bulky and too difficult uh, to maintain for regular use. As resources dwindled during the later decades of the Hundred Year Conflict, production was salted on the storm rifle, and that and they became a rarity in the field. So I think uh, we don't really have a whole lot of lore. So I think this, in a way, might be a really good way for the devs to, you know, we don't have. There's no planned map that we know of. I mean, I'm sure there have more map, maps designed planned. I think this could be a really cool way for the devs to maybe introduce some more lore. Like maybe, as it says, I mean, it says that they stopped being reduced. So maybe if we move into like a new field into a new map maybe north of Callahan's Passage or um, east of what is that, Deadlands. You know, as we move either east, north, or south really, you know, maybe we, we're just stumbling um, upon for long forgotten warehouses filled with these uh, storm rifles and we were able to re, you know, reverse engineer them or something like that. You know, maybe something to introduce, you know, add a little bit lore to the game. Next up is the Fueled Machine Gun. Um, we've known about this for, I, I want to say about four, four, six weeks, I want to say. Um, and he just wanted to highlight it. Um, so basically this will be artillery. Like it can, it's going to function like the artillery as in it's going to have a driver and an operator. It's going to function as an HMG in terms of suppressive, um, fire. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and read the description here. Uh, field machine gun, a wheel-mounted, high-caliber anti-infantry gun that requires two soldiers to transport and operate. The field machine gun is excellent at repelling infantry, enemy infantry, and will also have superior suppression capability. During the Great War, these guns were only used on static emplacements for defenses, but they have since been repurposed for the field. Equipped with 14.5mm uh, rounds, the uh, field machine gun is feared on the battlefield for its ability to steamroll through well-defended positions. A front-facing armored shielding provides cover, allowing operators to push forward during attacks with relative safety. So I think, that, again, this is safe to assume we are getting another ammo, a new ammo type of 145 millimeter rounds so I think it's probably going to be safe to assume this will be a either a tier 3 or tier 4 unlock at the uh, armory now and this will probably be I'm going to assume like the artillery gun it will be built in the vehicle factory and because of this I'm going to say it's probably going to be tier 1 or 2 probably tier 2 to 3 would be a safe bet um, my personal opinions on this is please give us towable um, field artillery and a field machine gun that would I mean honestly it just increase combat capabilities of clans and everything tenfold the ability to get artillery and you know the field machine gun into you know where they're needed in the battle could greatly change the you know tide of a war instead of you know it being built in uh... oh god I'm blanking on like name maps it's been, it's been like a week since I played Foxhole or it's actually been a longer than since I played Fox. So like uh Tootha on Endless Shore down to uh, uh what's not lights, uh 
anyways, you guys get know what I'm talking about here. You know, from one end, you know, from one side of the map to the other. You know, it's just. You know, with total artillery, we'd greatly um, have an ability to see artillery used way more. Next up is profile, uh, prof, profile profiles. Good going there, Mark. Um, I, 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 I'm, this is probably the thing I'm most excited for besides the field machine. Actually, I, I like all of these. I like the three big announcements. So we're kind of getting into this. Uh, basically, it's a player profile. Maybe that's what he meant. Maybe he meant to put player profiles. I, I, that's why I'm going to give him the uh, benefit of the doubt here. Um, so I'm just going to go... Mm, I hate when I do that. Just going to go ahead and... Uh, mm, Alright. You have OCD, I'm sorry. Uh, last fall, we be, uh, began working on a feature called Player Profiles, which was designed to give players a sense of persistence and progress for their characters. It was discussed in detail in the past uh, blog post, which I don't think I covered. But it is essentially, but it essentially allowed you to input some information about your character and your character's stats were reflective on how you played the game. So I'm assuming by stats, basic materials, mind, maybe um, enemy players killed, foxholes destroyed, something like that. Um, we actually implemented much of the uh, back end logic for the future at the time, but it got put on the back burner as we got busy with other things. Um, I think the kind of the uh, behind the scenes when they started adding statistics making those available for campaigns I think this would have been it that probably was a very key component to getting this figured out to help make sure we could they had the ability to track um, anyways getting back in we've always felt that player profiles was important was an important was and important so I'm gonna say and there uh, dealt Player profiles was an important part of Foxhole, so we're implementing a very basic version of it before early access launches, with the intention of building on the future. So, at the start of the bat, we can see we're going to have originally four. Um, I'm going to assume we're going to have four um, player profile icons. Um, three. Ma I, okay, I'm going to say two males for sure, one female, a black guy, and then mysterious man and or woman. Of unknown ethnicity, ethnicity, you know what I'm saying. Um, I'm just saying this is the one the DK is going to be pulling. Uh, if you guys know anything about Warhammer lore, like everything, you know, the 82nd uh, Death Corps of Krieg, I guess, is always wearing uh, gas masks, just you know, thingy. So much like the original features, going to finish, finish right in here. Uh, much like the original feature, players will be able to input basic information about the character, such as name, bio, and clan profile. Now. For, I'm going to stop right here, clan profile. So my biggest thing is, what the, to me the sense that is definitely we're going to get a clan system. Now what my concern is, is we already have an issue with imposters within the game. I've come across a few. I mean, they're not so bad right now, but I know when we had that huge uh, Twitch streamer, we had like six imposters that weekend. So my kind of question to the devs is, will... Um, there be is there going to be a system in place for clan officers to be able to say yep he's you know pug 10 cce 82nd dk you know is there going to be a system in place for us to be able to improve that and just um you know so we don't have imposters um <clears throat> and then next up we have so players will be able to select a profile picture but options will be limited at first um you know, kind of just get bare bone functionality here, which I'm totally fine with. One of our first additions we want to add, uh, include after profile, player profiles has gone out the door, is for players to be able to earn medals and reach other milestones that they can be recognized for. There's a lot of directions this future can go in the future. There, there's a lot of directions this future can go in the future. Just saying that sometimes fast. <laughs> uh, let us know what you'd like to see from the player profiles in the future, and Luckily, I'm going to let you know what I want to see, and I already suggested it, and I think it was logged, so A. And then early access preparations. Uh, as we approach early access, we've been switching gears and focusing much of our attention on launch preparation, such as making promo banners, cutting a trailer, reaching out to the press, and working out the technical logistics of release day. You can see some of our refresh planner uh, below. So, Foxhole, the old version I think where's that just now supposed to be the new version and then this new one and then yeah and then some new ones uh, I think this might be slightly misleading the persistent world warfare we're not there yet 
I, we, we, we're getting there with the campaigns, but I don't think it, it might be slightly misleading to say persistent world warfare. Because when I think persistent world warfare, I'm kind of thinking of um, it never resets. Now, granted, because I've played Fox, so I know what they mean. Um, it doesn't reset until the fat lady sings, basically. But to a new player, that might be slightly misleading. Um, that's from the outside looking in. And then, hey, Golden and Kylie, hey. Two of my, no, three. Three of my clansmen repping us. All right. So, um, for player profiles, um, you might have noticed up here I might have some, I have something loaded. So, hey, you guys said, let us know what you'd like to see from player profiles in the future. I'm going to cover it too. So, if you have no interest in, this is the rest of the dev by dev blog dissect. Um, if you'd like to, after this part, it's just going to be some suggestions before we head into EA, uh, both of which have already been um, suggested into the Foxwell official Discord, and one of them even got featured into the community highlights. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, so the first of the my uh, two suggestions I want to kind of make more public to everyone so I can get more feedback and, you know, the, make this more of aware, is alpha recognition and um, more of the medals. So, I'm just kind of get in here. I'm not going to read the whole thing because, yeah. So, basically, what this is is there's suits parts to this. Um, a lot of games have some sort of recognition for their alpha players or pre alpha players or beta players. So, we're just kind of simply asking for, you know, the same. We're not asking for much here. I'll explain later. And then I gave them some ideas for medals and whatnot. Now, this idea was originally from the whole idea of getting recognition for being in the alpha was originally given by one of my clan members one of my clan mates and unfortunately i don't remember his name off the top of my head and i do apologize but i'm sure i'll figure it out eventually anyways so the um first part of this um alpha recognition so this stems from the idea that you the devs uh, talked about having player medals to show off as we saw in dev blog 26 um, a way to show that a player has seen some shit, for lack of a better term, and isn't afraid to get town and dirty. So I was thinking the perfect way to do this would be a medal called the Old Guard or Great War Veteran. Um, me personally, I like Old Guard better. Um, this would um, not only serve a way for, um, as a way to let new players know who's been here a while and like who they can trust, but also lets them know they can kind of be trusted as teachers. Now. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of randoms and stuff who like have this, and you're going to have a lot of guys who are very experienced and have this, so that's kind of why it has the question mark. But it basically lets a new player know this guy's been here for a while. Um, and then another idea came from um, Smokage. I think he belongs to a Colonial Clan, but I think he's a, I know he's a moderator in FOD for sure. Um, his idea was a barrette, uh, or some sort of clothing item which would allow us to be more easily recognized in game. This would serve as the same purpose. As above, basically just recognition. Um, this kind of ties into the idea of a clothing sy system, which they've uh, discussed before. Discussed before. Um, and then the uh, last one of this was kind of my other idea was um, a lapel. Now, if you don't know what a lapel is, I'm pr I think I'm saying that wrong. Um, it's basically if you've ever seen like politicians, it's that little button. Normally, it's their nation's flag, um, but it's also on guys. Um, on our soldiers dress blues um i guess well yeah dress blues yeah um generally for uh infantry officers it's going to be u.s and then two cross rifles or some sort for some men it might be their rank i'm not entirely you know up to code on up to date on u.s military um uniforms you know but basically that's what it is so how this would work is not to confuse it with like our current rank because a rank reset is coming that was confirmed by the devs or at least some sort of reset of rank and level so this was just a way for like you know you to kind of say hey i was a uh staff sergeant before the uh before early access release and i was thinking too this would have you know i was saying this would belong to somebody who's been down fighting on multiple fronts you know we've been to callahan's passage and weathered expanse and endless shore and you know, we've been to all of those places, so this is not going to be a new, nice, shiny, fresh out of the box. No, this is going to be something that's sturdy, it's chipped, it's, you know, rusted a little, you know, to kind of give it that idea that 
you know, this is from, like, the olden days to help kind of maybe prevent confusion with um, somebody's current rank. Now, on to kind of the medals list. Now, only, like, one of these is really, um, only one of these is, um, kind of worded only. And I do apologize if you are colonial, but basically, it's lowest to highest. Now, if this doesn't make any sense, lowest to highest, um, in the U.S. military, a purple heart and in the Medal of Honor. Yes, I know the Medal of Honor is technically a neck order, but, okay, the, um, Medal of Honor is our highest, uh, award I think you can receive, like, out of everything, including civilians. Like, civilians can't earn it, but, um, basically... That goes above everything else. That's going to be your top one. While your Purple Heart, that's still valuable. It's not as, say, valuable as the Purple Heart. I think the Purple Heart outranks a Bronze Star. So if you win, like, the Bronze Star medal, um, it'd go behind the uh, Purple Heart. Again, I might be talking out of my ass here. I probably am. I'm not up to date on this. But if you do know the correct information, please be. Um, please don't be afraid to drop that below in the uh, comments. So basically, so low ties. So... The first, like, six of these, seven, because we have seven maps now, all have to do with winning or losing a match in um, campaign mode. So this kind of stemmed from the, uh, like, Vietnam service medals and stuff. So that's where these came from. And it's just if you win or lose. Now, you had to play at least for me. I didn't specify this, and I should have. is like, at least an hour on that map. Because I just don't want some guy, you know, log in. Instantly, he has seven medals. You know, logs into that server or something. Now, Fisherman's Row, because it won't be in campaign, you just have to, you know, play on it. Now, the, um, some of these you notice stem from my achievement guide, which I can go over real quickly. Um, so the Good Conduct Medal, you, uh, earn the achievement commendable. New Guard, per participate in the full launch. Um, so this kind of comes from the idea of alpha recognition. Um, Fresh Guard, participate in the beta, so that's going to be early access. Um, Callahan's Heart, this is the uh, Warden exclusive version, um, earned the Medic achievement, and if I remember correctly, the Medic one was Take Damage? Yeah, I get killed for the first time. Um, it's a mock of the uh, Purple Heart. Uh, Bronze Star earned the achievement, I think I'm getting the hang of this, that was... Uh, kill over 25 enemies. Um, Guardsman Medal, um, earned the achievement You Shall Not Pass, which was... Build over 250 walls, uh, guardsmen, guard, guard, yeah, walls, yeah, very, very bad, a pun, not really even a pun, R yeah, anyways, moving on, uh, legion of service, uh, serving over 50 wars, um, again, this is pretty much, I might change this to have over 50 hours of playtime or something, or 100 hours of playtime, but basically, you've been here a while, um, old guard, participate in the alpha, as we've already discussed, now, the reason why this is so high up is, well, not only very a very few amount of people will be able to actually have this achievement it's going it's already going to be limited come july 27th so um silver star earn the achievement rambo um kill over 100 enemies with the hmg or lmg i'm going to update that to the field machine gun um distinguish logistical service medal yeah that's that's a mouthful Earned the achievements Blacksmith, Scrapper, Blitzkrieg, Mass Production, and Panzerkampfwagen. Uh, in parentheses, the side of any good Logi player. If, if you have this, you are a... You are, like, the number one Logi slave. You are a Logi overlord. Um, blacksmith and Scrapper. Um, I should really rename those. Uh, blacksmith and Scrapper. I'm sure they're here somewhere, uh... I have mass production. Mass production. Uh, build over 30 crates of munitions um, in one day. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, uh, collect over 10,000 scrap. Refine 10,000 scrap. Uh, Panzer Kampfwagen. Build over 15 tanks. Um, and what was the other one? Blitzkrieg. Uh, build over 50 off tracks. And then last but not least, the Medal of Honor. It's the sign of any dedicated Foxhole player. Um, so earn the achievement, Medal of Honor, which is receive over a thousand commends, so this will be all of the bat very hard to achieve. Uh, moderate this, so that's going to be kill a community moderator, helper, or developer. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Highly commendable, so that's going to be... Uh, 
middle of what wait, what was it? Highly commendable. That's what did I put that as? Receive over fifty commends. Okay, that was kind of very rev. Okay, anyways, well, anyways, uh, looter. Uh, just loot over a hundred soldiers' backpacks, and then. Officer cadet, so you must achieve the, at least the rank of officer cadet. I get some with the commends; it's a little redundant. Obviously, you're going to get highly commendable if you have Medal of Honor, and then you have to leave, as well as earning the Legion of Service. So you've served in 50 wars, and that kind of this will be about 30 minutes. So kind of cutting out perfectly here, um, and then just one last thing I want to touch on: um, the amount of the game, twenty dollars. Um, I get there are definitely people who think that is too high for the estate of the game, and I agree with you. I think twenty dollars is a bit unreasonable. I I would have liked to see fifteen because I know that's what I I that's I know that's what I said. But um, if you know if you're like me and you've already vlogged sixty, you know, I've logged over sixty hours in the game. You know what I mean? I felt like I've already I've already got my money's worth. So you know, for me on launch day. I'm going to be in there, and I'm going to be, you know, chilling with everyone in the FOD and, you know, the uh, 82nd Death Corps. Um, hold on, wait, what day is July 27th? Okay, I requested that day off anyway, sorry guys. Um, you know, I know I'm going to be chilling in there, so, you know, guys, on July 27th, you know, even if you can't support the, uh, even if you can't, you know, support the game by um, actually buying it, so, you know, show up in FOD, you know, just, you know, kind of help build the hype for the game because if we can have a good launch weekend, then, you know, hopefully we can see Fox will really take off and, you know, you know, that that's going to be a good thing, you know. Granted, we're going to have to deal with some more trolls and whatnot, but hey, such is the way of life. So, you know, uh, you know, make sure, you know, July 27th, I think at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard, well, Eastern, Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m., oh, 10 a.m., so that's going to be what? 10 a.m. Eastern is what? Five hours behind GMT plus one? I think. I don't know. Anyways, it's 8.30, so me no do math, even though it's 8.30. Alright, guys. This is Jake Fox 84 signing off. Uh, thanks, guys, and have a great day.